Hello everyone. In this episode, I want to talk to you about geometric shells in DAS Studio. Those are kind of a fantastical, fantastical feature in the 3D world in that they are kind of a secondary geometry slash material placeholder that sits on the outside of an existing object. So imagine you had an object the object has its material, then you add a geo shell or geometric shell, and that then creates something like a shrink wrap on the outside of your object. But rather than it having its own geometry that we can modify, it has its own material zone. So the funky thing is then that we can apply a different material on top of something and then blend it in with the material that your original object has. So applications are something, imagine a character is underneath the shower and there's lots of soap bubbles running around their body and those soap bubbles if they're on their separate material can then be blended in to the original material of the skin or you know dirt and blood and scratches and all those types of things they could be applied to a geo shell and then leaving the original material intact in and without having to change the original underlying material. I will show you how to do this in an anatomical example later, but for now let's have a look at our default cube and see if he can help us out demonstrating this feature. I love the default cube. Let's head over to create a new primitive, bring back my default my favorite default cube inside of DAS Studio, often been deleted from Blender now, back alive in DAS Studio and kicking. So with it selected, I'll head over to my Surfaces tab and I'll head over to the Diffuse tab and I'll just go pick a different color here, just so that we can better visualize him. There we go, blue default cube, my favorite. So with the cube still selected, let's see what this geo shell has to offer by heading over here to create and it's hiding underneath here, new geometric shell. So geometric shell and geo shell, same difference really, it's just, you know, it is the same. So we're going to create a geometric shell here and it gives us some default options, super funky name and a label called cube shell. That's awesome. It's also offering to parent this to the selected item. I'll say I'll keep all that intact. And you can see that the visual outline of my cube has changed a little bit. And you can also see that on the right hand side here in my scene tab, you now have a second object. You have the cube and you have the cube shell. The cube shell by default is not selectable. So that is that in case you do select something in the viewport, the geo shell is kind of still parented to the cube. So when you do move something, you do actually move the cube and the child of it, the geo shell will also move as a result of that. You can, however, just to visualize this, you can, however, select the geo shell separately and then drag its node out. And now you can kind of see what's going on here. How is this, how this is working? So it will reveal that the original material of the cube is in fact intact and it just kind of slips around it. Like you, you know, take one of those clear wrappers from a cigarette packet. Cigarettes, hey, do you remember those? Anyway, I'm going to go and uh, switch this to the orthographic view. So we're just going to have a look from the left. And I'm going to go and have a look at this intersection here between the shell and the cube in close up. And if you look really closely, you can see if I just do this very gently and carefully, you can see that the geo shell is actually slightly bigger than the cube. So it isn't intersecting with the cube. It is slightly bigger. And you may have to change this depending on the object that you're working with. So sometimes you want this to be a bit bigger. Sometimes you want this to be a bit smaller. I believe the default value is is about 0 0.1 and we can adjust that in the parameters tab. So with the geo shell selected, head over to the parameters tab that I've got over here. And under general, you see this thing called mesh offset. And that is the offset in centimeters, how far away the geo shell is from your cube. So if I go and set this to zero, now the geo shell is going to intersect with my cube. That's probably not what we want. I think zero is a bit is a bit much, uh, but you know, something, to, it, it really depends on the situation. Play around with it. I can also give this a negative value, in which case the geo shell sits on the inside 
of my object. That might be useful if you have something, if your original object is already a little bit transparent and you want to show something that's inside the object, you know, anything from a beating heart to something, you know, a little bit weird, something that's on the inside of something. Imagine the body of water inside a glass of water or something like that. In that case, you can make that um, negative. So if I go and say minus 0.1, then you'll see that the geo shell will disappear. But as soon as I make the cube invisible, then you see that the geo shell is actually still there. It's just on the inside of the cube now. So I'm going to set this back to the default value, which was 0 0.1. And we can go and adjust that uh, later, just so that we know where that is now. It's on the parameters tab. While we're here, actually, with the GeoShell selected, it only has one other option that we can fiddle with, and that is which object it is, in fact, parented to. So you can reparent this to something else over here if you don't want to left click and drag it in the scene tab. And you can also set the visibility to on or off. It's slightly different what happens with this button than what would happen with the little eye icon in the scene tab here. It's not much of a difference. I mean, this will completely invisibilize the object in the scene altogether, whereas this will leave the actual object in the scene and just make its effect invisible. So whatever material we're going to dial up here is just not going to be affected, but the actual object is still visible in the scene. Depends on what, what, you, need, what you need, what you like there. I'll go and head back to the perspective view, and I'm also going to reset the position of the geo shell. So in case this ever happens to you, you want to reset that, you can just head over to the parameters tab again under um, general, and you can just go and reset its offset to zero. And then it'll just snap back into the position of the cube, no matter where your cube is based. Alrighty, let's have a look at the material for these things. So this is the other thing to remember very importantly. If I go and select my cube and head over to the Surfaces tab under Editor here, I can find everything that makes up the surface zones of my cube. So default is the, the one surface uh, material zone that we have here to which we can apply a material. And if we now go and select the geo shell, we see the same thing. So again, over in the material in the surfaces tab, we also have a material zone called default, which is great. So no matter which material, which object you select and then create a geo shell on, it'll take all the material zones of your original object, which is great, to all of which you can then apply a material. Now, notice that these descriptions look a little bit different than the ones on our cube, and that's because it's kind of a DAS thing. Uh, it, although it looks at the material zones and replicates them, it doesn't look at, is this object that I'm replicating a 3D light object or is it an iRay object? So it doesn't really look at that. It's you know been implemented for a while now, and I guess they've kind of overlooked this, that uh, these are actually RSL options rather than the MDL options and one of those things. So we're going to have to, if we're going to stick with iRay for this example, we're going to have to convert them into an iRay material. Let me just quickly do that. That's under preset sets and under uh, shaders I have iRay and there's the iRay uber base so as soon as I double click that then we will see that everything is now thankfully an iRay material definition thing here so which is that's that's nice so um if we make this uh, geo shell invisible for a second we see that the outline the visible impact of the cube is a little bit milky here and that is because by default the geo shell is set to 50% transparency. So under geometry, we've got this value here, the cutout opacity, and that's set to 0 0.5. And that is why this material appears to be milky. So if we go and make that uh, zero, then we don't see anything off our geo shell. And if we make that one, then we see 100% of our geo shell and we don't see anything off our cube anymore. So if I head over here and change just the color of my geo shell from white to something like uh, uh, kind of a strong yellow here, uh, now I can see that this is you know this is uh, this is yellow. But if I go and crank my transparency down, you can see that I can now blend the blue and the yellow together. And if I'm kind of in the middle here somewhere, I'm getting a green, and that's kind of exactly what I want. So this is how you can blend these two materials together. And that's really all there is to know about geoshells.
And I find that effect quite cool. It's uh, quite amazing what we can do with that. Let me show you another little example of kind of a usage example that will illustrate how this can be useful in a real life situation here. Let's go and delete the cube and go grab some content. I would like to show you this with the DAS brain. Let's go and see if we can find it. Can't find it. That's interesting. Why is the brain not here? Brain, there it is. The DAS brain. Awesome. So under anatomy, I have several choices of brain. In fact, this is for Victoria Four and Michael Four. So it's an old uh, product, but you know it's still it's still kind of creepy cool. There's the whole brain and the half a brain and the brain without the stem and all that. So we're going to use the Michael Four whole brain here, and that is uh, kind of what it looks like. There we go. It comes up with this default material, which is kind of for illustrative purposes to see what part of the brain is where. But it comes with a few other materials, uh, namely these ones here. So we've got the diagram, that's what we've got right now. Then we have the healthy brain and we have the rotten brain. We also have a jar into which the brain could fit. So, you know, if you want to pick that product up, it's available from the DAS marketplace. So if I head over and apply my healthy brain material, that's apparently what a healthy brain looks like, I can also apply the rotten material. Oh, rotten brain. So maybe you want to, you're working on something and you say, I would like to illustrate the progress of the brain going from completely healthy to completely rotten in the course of, I don't know, three or five or 10 images, or maybe even an animation. That is where we can use a GeoShell to blend the healthy material into the rotten material. So I'm going to use the healthy material for the brain first. I'm going to select the brain, and then I'm going to go and add a GeoShell to this thing. A geometric shell, there we go. Default options, totally fine with that. Parent all you like. And now I can see this milky white outline there. But also because the geo shell is kind of a ways away from the original brain and my brain is fairly small con uh, compared to the cube that we've been dealing with, I can actually see the distance between my object and my and my, my geometric shell. So in this case, the default value of 0 0.1 is actually a bit too big. And I'd like to bring that down a little bit. So let's do that under parameters. We can head over to mesh offset and that I'm going to make that a bit smaller. I think the zero would literally be intersecting, but still looking at the value that might actually work. Zero might actually be okay for me. If there's any kind of Z fighting that you see between these values, the smallest value that you can use in DAS Studio, I believe is 0 0.001. I think that is the smallest value that these things take, I said maybe another zero, 0, 0.0001. That I think is the smallest ever value ever in DAS Studio. I don't know if it makes much of a difference, but I'm one of those belt and braces kind of guys. I, I like I like for these things not to be in exactly the same spot, just to you know avoid any funny business. So there we go. We've got brain and we've got geo shell brain, both of which are three d light materials. So let's go over and turn them into eye ray materials on the surfaces tab. We can see that our brain actually has several material zones. So then all just called default there. There are a whole bunch of them and they're all um, three d light materials here. So I'll go and select all of them, head over to presets, go to iRay and turn them into the iRay Uber base material, retaining their respective textures. And now I'm going to do the same thing with my geo shell. Select those and there's the brain M4 shell. Uh, same thing here. They're all 3D light materials. So I'm going to go and select them all. Head over, apply the iRay Uber base shader here, just to make absolutely super sure everything is now funky here. Perfect. Yeah, you know, what I have totally forgotten is to apply an actual material to the geo shell. So let's do that next. With the geo shell still selected, let's go and pick the rotten brain material now. And if I do click that, we can see most of the rotten brain material in action already. Underneath which is, of course, hiding the healthy brain. Healthy brain versus rotten brain. 
All right. Uh, let's just see if these are still IRA properties. No, they're not. They've changed back. Mm -hmm. Should have just uh, done that the other way around. Apply the material first, then turn this into an IRA material, which we've done now. So since they're both in the same place, I can now go ahead and first of all, maybe switch my viewport over to IRA. See what happens. See, see what it looks like. There it is. Brain in its super exciting state and i'm gonna because there's several material zones i'm gonna have to select a particular material here perhaps the one that's facing us here the what is it the left hemisphere that's the one and i need to select that the left cerebrum in the geo shell not in the actual brain so not in the in the healthy brain i'm going to select the left cerebrum on the geo shell then open this up and under geometry, I can go under the cutout opacity value. And now I should be able to change this value down, thereby kind of um, taking out the cutout opacity value on the outside. I see this doesn't actually, this doesn't look great now. And I have a feeling that's probably because of the distance between the two. So I have a feeling the geo shell is now a little bit too close to the brain, I think. And that's why there's some shadow interference going on. Let's see if we can change that by putting the mesh offset, first of all, back to its default. Let's see if that makes a difference. Yeah, look at that. That makes definitely makes a difference, but it's still a bit too big. So I don't think I, I don't think I like that. So maybe I'm going to go and go with 0 0.001. See if that works. It seems to be better, but I can see interference here. There's little black spots in the brain. So that's also a bit too big. So 0 0.005 maybe. Is that better? Yeah, look at that. 0 0.005. That's going to work nicely. Perfect. So back to surfaces. And now I can go and crank up my rotten brain, literally. And that's how we can do that. So now you can literally illustrate the progress from first the brain is completely healthy to now it's kind of the rottenness is kind of creeping in there to creeping in a little bit more and then a little bit more and then eventually it's totally rotten. And that is how you can blend two materials together thanks to that geo shell. Takes a little bit of fiddling, takes a little bit of getting used to and experimenting. And it very much depends on what your object actually looks like uh, to make it work for you. So there's the offset, there's the, the making sure both materials are the same material. Also make sure that both materials that you're applying are made for that object. So if you're trying to apply, I don't know, a skin material from Genesis 8 to the brain now, that's not going to work. So you have to you have to make sure it's the the material that you're applying to both the geo shell and the actual object are made for one another, and you know then you can have all kinds of fun. So imagine blending a troll skin with human skin, or you know blending lizard skin with troll skin. You can make all all kinds of exciting things there, and I hope you're going to have lots of fun with that. That was it for today. If you liked this video, then please share it with friends, family and total strangers and enjoy your next 3D project. If you'd like to support me, buy me a coffee, you can do so. There's several links in the description of this video. Thank you so much. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.